anyway, like I say, LS and LC, I didn't need to use nuclear power. You've seen my um, my my um, my aircraft carriers and my battleships and stuff like that, but I used um, but I used coal mostly for them. Most of them were were, were coal fired. I mean, coal is fine. You get the if you have a big enough ship, if you have a ship that's six hundred feet long or three hundred feet long, it actually is very 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 efficient. Almost almost like like, like the efficiency of a of a of a, of a steamship versus a st the the efficiency of a um, of a uh, of a uh, diesel ship is comparable i mean there you can uh, and the beauty part of a steamship is that you can use you can use wood you can take you can take trees and just throw them in and i mean literally you can just have this hold and put trees in there and then you just throw them in and the, and the, and and the wood turns from from wood into charcoal and then burns you know so it just burns up no problem it's not really a big deal at all and in fact it you know, you know, you get ninety percent burn from the tree, which is perfectly fine. My my steam engines, uh, engines and steam and steam ships ran quite fine on on just wood or or coal. You can even use, or or you can use coal and and oil. You know, you just add a sprayer in there and then just ch 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 it sprays on the on the uh, on the on the trees and it's like turbo boost. I used to laugh about it. It's like hit the boost, man. <laughs> it just it just sprays oil down onto the fire, <laughs> and it's like turbo. <laughs> In fact, some of my ships they they would talk about the turbo option, which is basically what you do is you um you throw in as much wood as you can, and basically it, and basically it kills the fire almost. You you load it up with wood or coal until the fire is almost like almost out, and then basically you close it up. You 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 close and lock and and, and lock the things. <laughs> It's about to get really hot in there, and then you and then you turn on the pumps, and it and the sprayers turn on, and it goes, and it's turbo, it's turbo. It's just an oil spray. It just it just oil it just sprays oil or alcohol on onto the wood, and basically, um, so basically it's just like just like a jet, and the um, and the and the air that comes in. Uh, and I think you run the fan or whatever. It's like a jet engine almost, where where, where where it comes down and it contacts, and then it and it lights on fire. And eventually, the fire actually gets up to almost like where the where the burner where the sprayer is. <clears throat> so it's almost like a rocket. <laughs> it's funny to watch. Like like they they took one and did and did a cutaway and showed and showed how how as the new air comes in. And because of all the heat and everything, it hits the the, 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 the sprayer and it would go, you know, just like jet down and blast down. Because some of my sprayers, what they did was it used a ball or something like that. And then the spray would come down and then it would hit that and then it would spray down. Because these things have to be able to withstand like 5,000 degree temperatures. So they had to be fairly strong and all that other stuff. And it was... I forget exactly how they, they did a couple different varieties where they just did little pinholes in the top and it comes in because... And then the heat... You know, protects it. But basically, the the stream would come in, and then basically it would it would hit the wood, hit hit the wood and fire, and then it would ignite, and then it just builds in heat and power, pressure, like um, like if you just kept spraying basically until the, the bottom gets all nice and f unsoaked. And basically, if you have enough of a if you have a large enough stack going up, uh, basically all of the heat, you know, the the, the air the, the fresh air comes in here, the heat goes out and um, or up and then you have all the all the different water water systems coming up all the pipes and you have like a heat or a fire a fire baffled or whatever at the bottom and then as it as the heat comes up it contacts all these and the cold water comes in down here comes in from the top down so it's getting the cold air and as it goes down and down and down and down and down and by the time it gets to the bottom it's like high pressure steam basically <clears throat> And I forget exactly how we run the pump because you basically need to pump in at the same pressure that you're getting out, basically. But you're pumping in less. <laughs> anyway, but so I forget exactly how they do it. But basically, and it's one of those pumps where or you can pump extreme pressure. It's it's one of the blast is it's one of the blast furnaces as as they call it, and it's one of my designs basically where they have. The steam pressure, a belt, basically a gear belt, basically runs the little pump that pumps in the water. 
I forget exactly how it works. There's a couple different varieties. I think one of them too is I forget exactly how it works. Like I designed it once or they designed it once. Anyway though. Cool thing. <laughs> Sounds like I'm talking out my ass. <laughs> uh, anyway though, but yeah. The the Titanic and, and quite a few of my other LS ships and LC ships had these these things and also my steam cars. And like I say, when, when they came out with the nuclear power, when they when they first discovered uranium and everyone was like, Uranium, uranium, let's get let's get uranium or or they, they call it something else. Um I, I forget what what the name for nuclear uh, isotopes were basically, but they were like, they're like, oh, it's the new best thing. You got to get on board. You got to invest in this. You got to invest in this. And they they were they were taking investments. And I'm not even sure if they were actually doing anything with the uranium because I was doing some stuff with uranium and I was the one that was refining it. And I was like, Ooh. because I was because like I said, I was seeing. They told me about all the deaths, and I was like, no, <coughs> stop work. Um, I would not mine it. I would not work on it. I would not do anything with it if it was going to be a danger to my workers or my or my people so basically I pretty much halted all work to it and certain people saw this as an opportunity certain people thought oh Alice has backed off it now's our chance and they ran for it they sent all kinds of miners into those mines they were like it was Mr. Brown and Mr. Black or whatever and like I said I was telling people no um, we need suits and that's where NASA actually got the radiation suits was from the mining stuff because I wouldn't even go in the mines or, or work around it if my people were going to be sterile and, and losing their hair and dying because people were losing their hair like crazy and sometimes the workers would only last five days and then they would die. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. My employees are too valuable for that. So like I say, certain people saw this as the opportunity of a lifetime to finally get ahead of me. And they ran with it. And I'm not sure whatever happened to them. Probably probably died. But in that way, I lost the market. You know, uh, that was that would basically be my downfall, if there was a downfall. Was that I restricted my mind down to just bare skeleton staff. And basically, you know, until we could get an idea of what was going on and how it was happening. Of course, I had the Curies and everything and everybody else working on it, too. I said, there has to be particles there. Look for those particles. There's a reason why these people are losing their hair and dying. So they were just spending as much time as, 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 as needed because other people were like, you're crazy, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. They, they probably were sick anyway. Yeah, there's all kinds of excuses uh, running around. And later on I actually sent out some, some uranium to some people so they could look at it with advisory that, not, that this is very dangerous and many people have died handling it. So, and it was just a very, very small amount, like... Like, yay much. I figured a really small amount of uranium was enough, you know. So anyway, like, like I said, meanwhile, there are certain people that were, that, that were doing the, the road that you would never have to, have, to, have to defrost again. It would just stay warm. And I'm... Anyway, they, they paved 30 miles of it. I'm not sure what happened to the workers. Like I say, they came to me for money and as, like my people said no. I said no. So they actually did it very much without me. So like I say, um, I wouldn't get near it. So, Or allow my people to get near it. And I guess that caused a division maybe. At least until we knew how to handle it. So that's why my military ships weren't actually nuclear reactors. And there were...